Should you be using WordPress, Webflow, or Bubble to build your no-code app? This is a really hard decision to make because each platform has lots of different capabilities and some of them might seem to overlap. So how do you know which one is right for you? Well, we're going to break that down in this video and help you make a decision. Now, to be clear, we're not going to be going through a complete feature list of every platform and comparing them side by side because the reality is you can make this decision a lot more easily. But the first thing you need to do before we even get to the different platform capabilities is understand exactly what it is you're building. So are you building a website or a product? Now I'm going to simplify these things just for the sake of this video and helping you make a decision. But when we talk about a website, we're talking about something that is information based. You go on a website to consume information. And when we talk about a product, we're talking about something that you interact with in order to solve a problem. Now, again, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to group a few things into the product category. So a product could be a service, for example, or an app, or it could be a physical product or a digital product. So again, simplicity's sake, we'll call all of those things products. So you have to decide which is it that you're building. Now, I wanna dig into this a little bit further. So I have a quick example of our own here, but I'm over at coachingnocodeapps.com and you can see we have our website here, right? If you scroll down, you're gonna see information, but that information is going to help you decide whether or not there is a product that's going to help solve your problem. The problem being you are having trouble building and launching your no-code app. Now, one of the products that you might end up using is something called the VIP membership. Now, this is a dashboard full of tutorials that are going to help you use Bubble to build different features in your app. Now, the thing to understand is that this is interactive. So you have your own user account within this dashboard and you can interact with these tutorials. You can save them uh, to a certain list of your own. You can see trending tutorials or the most recently updated. Um, so you can take different actions within this. And so one of the biggest things to understand is that a website is going to help sell a product. Okay, so there's another key differentiator for you. But I want to go into another example. I want to do another easy one here and then we'll get to one that kind of trips some people up. So I'm over back on our website at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash build to scale. So this is a landing page where it's an information based page where you can learn more about our coaching and mentorship program where we take entrepreneurs from idea to first app. Okay, so this would help guide entrepreneurs into the product on the other side, which is the actual program itself, which has different components. So you could call it a service, you, you know, there's also app based components. So again, a product or something that solves a problem. Okay, so hopefully that helps you understand website information based and generally going to lead someone in to using a product to solve a specific problem. But let's go into that other example I mentioned. What about something like Airbnb, where you can come on and search a bunch of different listings of rentals that you could visit? This one kind of trips people up because from a certain perspective, you could see it as a website. I mean, you are using a web browser to navigate to Airbnb.com and here it is. You can scroll through and consume all of this information but there's actually a lot of interactivity involved in using an app or a product like Airbnb. So if you think about what Airbnb does, it connects renters and hosts with properties. Now, someone who's renting a property on Airbnb can create a user profile. And again, they can interact with those listings so they can you know, save a listing to a favorite list. So if I click a heart there, then that's going to pull up, you know, different wish lists, for example, and you can actually rent out a property. You can message hosts and all of that. And then of course, on the host side, you can list your property and set the price or change the price um, and really just manage your property as a whole. So there's a lot of interactivity and there is a problem being solved. 
So the product, that one also might kind of trip you up because the, it might seem like the homes themselves are products, which for the hosts, they are, right? That's the thing that they are selling. But Airbnb itself is also taking a cut. I mean, Airbnb does make money after all. And so Airbnb is the solution or a product itself because it's solving the problem of being able to find these properties or to find the renters, to connect the renter and the host. So this is a product or an app. And now let's look through one slightly different example. So I'm on activecampaign.com and activecampaign is an email marketing service. Now, right now I am on their website. If we scroll down, you can see all of the information that they've laid out on their website, but their product itself is their email marketing service. And you can actually see in their menu up here, they have a drop down labeled products. And you can see they have marketing automation, email marketing, um, site tracking, landing pages, sales automation, all of that. So even right there, that gives you a good idea of how a website will lead someone to a product. Now, an interesting thing to understand about ActiveCampaign and how this operates and many other apps, um, SaaS applications, different platforms, how they operate is over on the website, we're at activecampaign.com. But when I log into my Active Campaign account, this URL is gonna change to coachingnocodeapps.com.activehosted.com uh, or something similar to that. In other words, we're going to switch over to a subdomain. So you can have a website and a product or an app that are sort of the same, but also sort of not. In other words, you might have a landing page on your main domain and your app on a subdomain. That's a common practice and we'll get into it a little bit later, but it's something to keep in mind. So now you should have a pretty good idea of what it is you are building. But if not, we're still gonna clear that up because now we're gonna go in and actually take a look at the platforms themselves, WordPress, Webflow, and Bubble. And this is gonna help you narrow down even further. So right now I'm over on the WordPress landing page and you can see right at the top, we have welcome to the world's most popular website builder. So. Again, going back to website versus product, you now know where we're headed when using WordPress. But what I wanna do is scroll down to their pricing plans. So if you take a look here, and again, we're not gonna go line by line because you don't really need to, but essentially the first three plans are going to focus on information-based websites. So maybe you are creating a blog, for example. Maybe you're even creating a portfolio. But if you look up a little bit further, then we get into their business and their commerce plans. And then you start to see an introduction of something like um, a store customization or the ability to sell and ship products or inventory management. So that might confuse you a little bit further because some of the lines become blurred. But what, what you need to understand about a platform like WordPress is that beyond the website capabilities, so the showing of information to your visitors, you can also build things like storefronts. Okay, so that means you can have a website that shows information that will help sell a product that might be a physical product or a digital product. So if you're building a storefront and selling your own products, you could do that on WordPress. So we're now going a little bit outside of that purely information-based website, but it's still important to understand that the website itself that you would build on WordPress would sell your physical or digital products. But what about Webflow? Well, that's what I have pulled up on the screen here. And now things start to change a little bit. You can see at the top, their headline is build with the power of code without writing any. Now, this can be a little bit confusing because when you're thinking about building a no code app and you see something that says no code in a headline, then you might think, well, that would be for me. 
But there is definitely a separation between a platform like Webflow and a platform like Bubble. So if we scroll down, you'll see that it says Webflow is used by more than 3,500,000 designers to create, collaborate on, and scale beautiful websites in a completely visual canvas, no coding required. So we're clearly looking at websites here. Now, versus WordPress, which we just talked about, which seems to be the same, but maybe marketed a little bit differently. Well, Webflow tends to take a more design focus to give you more flexibility and control over the design without having to use code. So if you are more design focused, then you are going to, or Webflow rather, is going to resonate with you. And you can see they even have a landing page called webflow.com versus WordPress. And if you scroll down and just kind of do a quick glance, you can see it says build a better website without code, build visually without code, craft custom interactions and animations, design. So again, we're looking at more control over the design of the website, but without coding or without having to go in and uh, alter a template like, like you might have to on WordPress, okay? But that said, with Webflow, you can do similar things. You can create that website, which is information-based, that could lead to a product, right? Uh, you can create a portfolio, and you can even create an online storefront that would allow you to sell your physical or digital product. But that's going to take us over to Bubble, and that's where we're at now. So Bubble's headline here is build anything without code. This drag and drop editor lets you focus on building the best product. Keyword here, product. Okay, so you can build any web app with no code. You can customize the UX, manage data and accounts, integrate with anything using APIs. Um, you know, you can drag and drop, use dynamic content, create multilingual apps. I mean, this goes on and on and on, right? You have the ability to build scalable applications that are secure and private, and you can also manage that security and privacy by deciding who gets to see what data within your application. So there is a lot of control that you have when building something in Bubble. Now, you understand what a website is, and you understand what a product is, right? Or what we're calling kind of the product category, the solution that you might be selling. And now you also have an overview of what you can generally build on WordPress, on Webflow, and on Bubble. WordPress and Webflow are used for websites or potentially online storefronts to sell physical or digital goods. Bubble is going to be used for web apps, which are products. So these are solutions to a problem that a user is going to interact with. Now, one of the biggest points of confusion is this. You can build the same things that you might build on WordPress or Webflow by using Bubble. And this is where we see a lot of confusion because there is a lot of overlap. So you can create those information-based landing pages. For example, we have landing pages that we create on Bubble that then lead to products or apps that are created on Bubble. Okay, so you can do both, but you cannot do on WordPress or Webflow all of the things that you can do on Bubble. That's important to understand. You're not creating a product on WordPress or Webflow. You can create something that sells a product, okay? But you are creating a product on Bubble. Now you might be wondering, well, should you use Bubble to create things that you could otherwise create on WordPress or Webflow, or should you just use WordPress or Webflow? Well, it kind of depends. If you don't need Bubble, if you don't need any of those capabilities, you don't need to go use Bubble to build a landing page or a static website. You can use WordPress or Webflow for that. But if you need anything that is customizable, 
anything that you're going to offer to your users for them to interact with and solve a problem, then you're going to want to use Bubble. Now, you might also be wondering about the storefront capabilities. So what if you are wanting to create a storefront that sells your own digital or physical products? Well, you could use the higher tier plans over on WordPress, for example. We pulled that up and looked at it. You could also do that on Bubble, and I would say it really depends on what kind of flexibility do you want. Do you want to build that storefront and customize it to your exact needs? I mean, down to the pixel, every single little thing. Do you maybe want to add on to your storefront by creating tracking and analytics that are custom to your own business's needs? Do you potentially want to expand down the road and maybe offer a membership to your customers or some other arm of your business that comes in the form of a product? Well, if any of those things resonate, then you can use Bubble because you can do it all on Bubble. You don't need to build some of it on WordPress or Webflow, for example, and then some of it on Bubble. You might as well just build it all in the same place. It's a lot easier to manage, and it's also going to be financially smarter. Now, I also want to go over some questions that we've gotten about this that you might be having too. So this person asks, where do you draw the line on what the product or what the website is? If both design and products have functionality, how would you make the difference? So basically, if a user is navigating through your website and maybe they are reading through different blog posts and they are a user following a user's journey throughout your website, where do you draw the line? And again, the easiest way to do this is, are you building a website or product? Product being something that solves a specific problem when the user is interacting with it. So that's where you're going to draw the line. A website is going to often sell that product. Now, this person asks, for creating a website, do you recommend doing it inside of Bubble or using WordPress? I have the most experience in WordPress. And we touched on this a little bit, but to go a little bit deeper, if you are only building an information-based website, then there's really no reason to use Bubble. So if you are not building a product, again, there's really no reason to use Bubble. Now, could you build a website on Bubble? Yes, but again, you don't really need to. And because Bubble has so many capabilities, it's gonna take you longer to learn how to use Bubble just to build a website when again, you really don't need to. But you also have to ask yourself, are you building an app on Bubble simultaneously? And you're thinking about building a website to market that app. Well, do you build that the website on something like WordPress or Webflow and just the app on Bubble. This also really depends. This is up to you. So I would say from the perspective of this question, you know, where this person said, I have the most experience on WordPress. If this person were also building an app on Bubble, but they're really comfortable with WordPress, well, they could just build their app on Bubble, build the website on WordPress and put the main domain on, uh, attach the main domain to their WordPress website and put their app on a subdomain. So their WordPress website or landing page could be myapp.com and their bubble app could be app.myapp.com. So this goes back to that active campaign example that we went through at the beginning of the video. Now, do you need to do this? No. You can build everything on Bubble, and if you're starting fresh, in other words, you don't have experience with either one, there's really no reason to use two different platforms. If you're learning Bubble to build your app, you might as well build your website or your landing pages on it as well. Now, this is another question that comes up pretty frequently. This person asks, can we use Webflow for a landing page and connect it to Bubble as a backend with Zapier due to SEO reasons. So maybe they wanna use Webflow because they want the SEO capabilities that Webflow gives them, but they want the um, app building capabilities, the database capabilities that Bubble gives them. So technically, can you do that? 
Yes, technically you could. Should you do that? Probably not. I'm not going to make a cut or dry blanket statement because maybe there's a, a niche scenario where someone is super experienced with WordPress and this is a really um, easy use case for them to also develop. Okay, maybe. 99% of the time, there's just no reason to do that. With Webflow, you're gonna have your standard SEO capabilities, but you're not going to have functionality, right? With Bubble, you're going to have standard SEO capabilities, but you are going to have all of the functionality, all of the power to create your application. So there's just really no reason to do something like that. Webflow, Zapier, Bubble. You don't need to string together these different platforms when you can just use one. And this person asked, which platform would you use to build a marketplace? In this one, we can look back to our Airbnb example. So Airbnb is a marketplace and we talked about how there is functionality there. Airbnb is a product, right? So you, Airbnb itself as a product or a solution is serving to connect the renters and the hosts, right? So if you're building a marketplace, then you're going to be connecting a user with something whether that be a product or a listing or, or a property, something like that. So you're going to want to use Bubble if you are building a marketplace because a marketplace is a product because a marketplace is a solution of some sort. Now, if you are building an app, a product, a solution, and you understand now that it makes sense to use Bubble, but you want help going from idea to actually building and launching that app, then I want you to head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop for a free extended training that's gonna guide you through the next steps to take from here. How do you pull your app idea out of your head and get it into a customized development plan for yourself, a strategic development plan? How do you start using Bubble to build your custom no-code app? Because like I said, Bubble gives you a ton of power, so there's a lot to know. And what's even possible when you use a platform like Bubble to build an app, to build an app-based business potentially? Well, head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop for a training that's gonna walk you through all of that and more. All right, I hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.